holding the powerful accountable from Washington, D.C. to right here in southern New England. This is 10 News Conference with Gene Valicente. And good morning, everyone. I'm Gene Valicente. This is a special 10 News Conference, a debate with the candidates running to be the mayor of Attleboro in the studio with me. Let's go left to right. By the way, everybody was chosen just alphabetically, left to right, Timothy Barone. Good Next morning. to him, good morning, former city councilor John Davis, current city councilor Kathleen DeSimone, and Jay Delisio, who is the acting mayor now, and the former city council president. We'll dispense with opening statements. We'll get right to it. But all of the candidates will have a one-minute a closing statement later in the broadcast. All right, let's, so let's begin. Uh, show of hands, who has had uh, uh, political experience before? We just went through it. One, two, three. Uh, Timothy Barone, you would like to get into politics? Most people want to run the other way. Why do you want to get in? Well, I mentioned before in the other debates that uh, you can't really complain about your government unless you've tried to be part of it and try to fix it. And also, too, I spent the last four years at about 10 or 11 major political conventions, both Democratic and Republican. Mm -hmm. So I've studied all this stuff, all the theory, all the policy, and I just want to implement all the stuff I've seen that's worked on both sides. Okay, so it's time. Uh, you were in, you are on the council, now you're out. Uh, John, you want to get back in? Absolutely. I mean, at, at a time like this, I think my you know, historical knowledge of government and experience I've had in my lifetime will really lend itself well to this position. You know, at a time where we're trying to get more economic development in our community, I've been a businessman for 35 years, and I've done you know, projects all over the country. Yeah, so you were on the council, now you're off, yes. but you want to be the mayor. Kathleen, you're on the council now. You want to stay? No. Stay in politics. I, yeah, yeah, stay in politics, yes, but I'd rather, I want to operate from the corner office, Gene. This is an evolution for me. I've been involved in the city since 2010 and various community groups. I'm on the council now. At this particular moment in time, I'm think, I think I'm the right person to continue moving the city forward for several reasons. I'm a parent. Uh, I have the education, experience, knowledge, and insight, but also the creativity, collaboration, and innovative spirit. Okay. It's a good moment, and I'm the person for the moment. Now, Jay, you've got a little taste of the corner office. By the way, is it the corner where the mayor's office is? It, it actually yes. is the corner. Yeah. yeah. As the yeah. acting mayor, do you like the view? Do you want to keep it? It's a great view. Would love to keep it. Why? Why do you want to stay? Well, I have the experience. I uh, recently, prior to taking over as the acting mayor, as the assistant registrar for the Registry of Motor Vehicles, gave me the executive experience really building and working with employees to deliver efficient government services. That's something that I've taken with me in this role as the acting mayor. Okay. Because efficient delivery of government services really depends on how engaged the city workers are. And we're lucky inside and outside uh, City Hall to have the city work as we have. Okay, a good kind of an opener. Now, you run uh, non-affiliated. You, you don't run as Democrats or Republicans. Do you mind telling me, are you a registered Democrat or a registered Republican or, a regist or an independent, or you care not to answer? Let's begin with you, Timothy. Well, at this current point, I'm unenrolled. Uh, so I, I'm not identifying with either party, but also I would say if I had to pick a party, I'd yep. be a JFK Democrat who gets con uh, accused of being conservative. Okay, so an old line Democrat, right. an old exactly. Roosevelt Kennedy Democrat. Classic. Classic. Interesting. Yeah. yeah, I've heard that. How about you, John? Well, Gene, when I was younger, I was a Republican, and at one point I was treasurer for the local Republican Party. But for the last almost 20 years, I've been a Democrat. You know, I'm a moderate, middle-of-the-road individual in everything I've done in life. And you know, I think that's what we need today, is someone who can uh, work yeah. effectively with people on both sides of the aisle. So you're a Republican, now you're a Democrat. You're a Democrat as we speak. How about you, Kathleen? Gene, I'm unenrolled slash independent in Massachusetts. I've been in the wide middle for the, I think, the past 20 years. Um, I'm a very reasonable, moderate person. I don't think money solves every problem. I think innovation is actually the key to solving and getting around problems. Do you usually vote Democrat, though, over the past 20 years, if I went back and looked? Uh, yeah, but I did vote every time for our previous mayor, who uh, was a Republican and nonpartisan race. So I am certainly, and, and I voted for Charlie Baker. So yes, I'm open to whoever the right person is for the job. OK, interesting. Jay? I am a Republican. I like to refer to myself as a Charlie Baker <laughs> Republican. Mm -hmm. um, I've been called a rhino. and. Uh, when that happens, sometimes I say thank you. It's, I appreciate the compliment. Because uh, it's all about the issue in front of us. It's about the person. It's about moving the city forward. For okay, me. Charlie Baker, Republican. All right, you mentioned issue in front of us. What is the number one issue that the voters are concerned about in mm. Attleboro? You go first, Acting Mayor. Yeah, so I think when we're out knocking on doors, we hear a lot about trash. We hear about the small trash barrels. I am working on a solution for that, but I think the biggest issue that's going to be facing us over the next couple of years is housing. And how do we reju rejuvenate and refresh downtown? And that's by building and working with uh, some of our state, local, and regional partners yep. for commuter and workforce housing. We're lucky because we have two train stations in Attleboro. The South Attleboro is uh, current slated to be redone, reju uh, rejuvenated, and reopened. 
in the interim, let's take advantage of some of these great older buildings that we have that we can refurbish, turn into commuter and into uh, workforce housing, as well as um, working with the Attleboro Redevelopment Authority right. on finalizing the, river, the riverfront um, development. All right, let's hold it there. Uh, Kathleen, he mentioned trash. I like these bread and butter issues for a May. Oh, yeah. It's about yeah. trash, collect yeah. my trash, fill the pothole. Yeah. Uh, I got a little complaint over here. Is that the kind of mayor you want to be? And answer that, but then what's the number one Absolutely. issue? Absolutely. One of the best jobs, one of the best parts about being mayor is that you have direct contact with people in their everyday existence versus government at the state and federal level. So it's very much about garbage, smooth roads. Uh, maintenance of roads is a huge issue for a lot of folks in Attleboro. So the, and water quality, these are all things that the mayor has a direct impact on. And I share Jay's opinion, housing is a huge issue, but I think the immediate concern for many is the economic instability and in, uh, property taxes. Of, of course, Attleboro is most diverse in terms of income level. So property taxes is fundamentally the one issue that hits everybody in their pocketbook. In order to keep the city stable economically, the, the prior mayor did a great job with the stabilization fund, no layoffs. Okay. We need to grow our tax base. We need to add businesses because everybody feels like they're getting less and less for their taxes. So we okay. need to expand the pie and make sure that people feel that they're living in a community that they're contributing to and get the services that they deserve. All right. So trash and housing, you certainly trash, potholes, uh, economic. and uh, economic development, tax mm -hmm. stabilization. John, okay, number one issue. Well, Kathleen's right. As I go around talking to people, people's biggest concern is the increased cost of living. And that affects people in, in, in so many ways. But people get frustrated when they're paying taxes they see, in many cases, as exorbitant. And they see basic fundamental services, like your trash, like your roads, like the quality of water being subpar, or at least not what it once was. You know, we really need to learn how to be um, on the ball with the basic needs. You know, we get too caught up with the things that, that are wants. We need to focus on the fundamental needs of people. Those are the services they can't provide for themselves. Right, just do me a favor, focus on one issue. I had housing, tax stabilization. Your number one issue at the top is? Economic development, because without that, we won't be able to afford any of these nice sounding things that we've been talking about now for months. <clears throat> okay, Timothy? Well, this is one of the key issues that um, I'd say businesses. Uh, I moved a small business right into the center of Attleboro, and I checked all the costs. And within two months, the parking went up 67% on one day because the city hall had forgotten for 17 years to raise a, raise a parking, so they did it one day. If you're not creating an environment where businesses can come in to Attleboro and stay there for decades, then they're all going to leave, and we think we have to have, all have our jobs in Boston. But we used to have TI. We had all these major corporations. We were the jewelry capital of the world. I'm not saying I could wave a magic wand and bring that all back. But we need businesses in the center of town and then work it all the way back. Okay. And what business did you open? What was well, it? It's a life improvement center. So we offer courses and a thing called the iron cleanse and anything that helps a person. You all uh, have outlined sort of similar themes. And I think you all like each other. You all get along. So you, we have for the voters who are tuning in, let's distinguish between the four of you. Mm -hmm. How would you do a better job on economic development and filling the potholes than your, than your competitors, acting mayor? No, thank you for the question, Gene. So what we need to do is we're talking about housing, we're talking about economic uh, development, we're talking about businesses. Housing's gonna spur that, um, that economic development. We need to rebuild partnerships, which I've already started to do as acting mayor with our TDI fellow, Chamber of Commerce, GATRA, and SERPED. This is how we're going to be able to sit, kind of flip the switch and say, hey, Attleboro is open for business. We have to market Attleboro to different businesses to say, hey, come on here. Don't just bring your business, but bring your workforce. This is going to spur the butcher, the baker, and the candlestick okay, maker. So I think you're saying you've started already. You've already got a started start. these relationships with DEP to work on the Blackstone. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, the... Um, Blackstone development team, which is going to help us be able to refurbish and repurpose some of these older buildings in there. Okay. But John, what, what, how do I distinguish you from the others? Everybody has similar issues, housing, right. economic right. development. What, what makes you different? The key to my success in business was always collaboration and you know, finding out what is the strength that each person around us has to offer. Part of being a leader is about allowing the people to the left of you and to the right of you to be the best of them that they can be and collaboratively we'll get somewhere. Uh, you know, we talk about open, uh, transparent government, but that's not about leaders telling people what decision they've made. It's about allowing people to have a seat at the table when those decisions are being formulated and, and made. All right. All right. Well, listen, we're, it's okay for you to mix it up. So you're saying you're a superior collaborator. Do you know something about the other candidates that I don't know? I, I have no disparaging comments about any no, of my No, not disparaging, opponents. but I mean, how do you distinguish yourself as sort of a su superior collaborator, someone who gets along with others? Well, I think my lifetime of experience and everything I've done in government 
and in business and in church activities and nonprofit organizations I've been the head of. I mean, I was the president of the board of directors of Self Help. They run the federal Head Start programs, okay. the federal fuel assistance. That is the most diverse collaborative group of people you'll probably find in southeastern Massachusetts. They chose me to be the president of the board of directors. Obviously, it's because I could work with a whole array of people to achieve the objective that we set out. All right, Timothy, what do you make of what you're hearing, and could you do a better job than the others? Well, I, I believe, see, I, I want them all part of my administration. I mentioned oh, okay. that because none Interesting. of them, well, two and, yeah, two wouldn't leave. Team and, of rivals. Exactly, yep. and, and then also I talked with John about the. Um, a business incubator. And one of the key things I think it, what a mayor does is, is has the key pr core principles. Like one of the key things I've read about over and over again is inflation doesn't have to happen. If money is uh, managed properly and we can create our own economy in, in Attleboro and do that through businesses, then we don't have to have all, everything going skyrocketing. Mm -hmm. Now it, it, it's one city, but you got to start somewhere. All right. And Kathleen, how do you distinguish yourself from your competitors here? And would you assemble a team of rivals? I'm curious. Yes, I, I completely <laughs> agree. I, I, that's, that's what a smart person would do, and I'm absolutely open to that. I definitely would continue that. I just want to say that the difference that I have is that I understand that the mayor isn't making this stuff up, Gene. There are plans in place, our comprehensive plan, our open space and recreation plan, our urban renewal and downtown development plan. One of the things that the mayor does is, ex is prioritize and execute on plans that have been thoughtfully laid out many years ago, and we're proceeding on those. So we're not going to make this up. It's nothing new. Your job is to execute and prioritize, and I am certainly aware of everything. But I'm already, importantly, already doing this stuff, Gene. As a member of the city council, I'm advocating for additional and diverse forms of housing. I'm pushing for the housing uh, needs assessment, which is now coming. I'm supporting uh, accessory dwelling units, adding them as a possibility, inclusionary zoning. I'm already doing this stuff. I'm not waiting to get upstairs. I lead by example. I'm a person of action. And in terms of the economic, I would just suggest to Jay that in my experience with Jay on the city council, because he, he talks about budget experience, we don't create the budget. We either approve it or we make a cut from it, number one. Number two, my concern with Jay is consistently, every time at property tax classification, Jay advocates for the reduction of what we call the tax shift in Attleboro. If we reduce that shift, residents would pay hundreds of hundreds dollars more each year, and business would pay up to thousand dollars less. I'm not quite sure how that helps the residents I've and benefits the multi-million dollar companies in the city. I'll let you respond. Take about thirty seconds. Yes. So. It just shows Kathleen's inexperience with the budget and with tax classification. DOR says that we should really only have the single um, tax rate. Our assessor has said the same thing. We're sitting here talking about businesses, and <clears throat> Attleboro historically has not been business friendly. So by putting a higher um, burden of the tax split mm -hmm. on the businesses, a lot of the business owners who are actu uh, actually homeowners in Attleboro as well, if these businesses leave, which a lot of them have left over the last several years because taxes being pretty, uh, pretty high to the yeah. top of the list, that shift then goes to the taxpayer. So it's not as cut and dry as my opponent's making it out to All me. All right, so I've got a little bit of a divide. Uh, yeah. These two appear to be going after each other on something, uh, but you two, uh, am I seeing sort of a uh, follow the leader here? Do you want to take it, Timothy? What am I seeing here? Um, I mean, uh, well, she's, uh, Kathleen's going after. Uh, Jay, and Jay is firing back. Where do you want to get in on this debate here? I mean, my, my, my key thing, I, I, the point that I did like Catherine, Kathleen had mentioned was uh, not waiting to be elected to be mayor. I've already been working, uh, uh, re making reports to the AG, because there's a great book called Save the Cat. If you want to become a director, just start directing. If you want to be the mayor, you got to, I mean, you, within legal bounds, is you, you have to start representing the city, and that's what I've been doing. Well, how have you been doing that? Well, one of the key points, and I don't know if you've noticed this, is a lot of uh, stores are trying to go cashless, which is actually yes. illegal in Massachusetts. There's actually a statute that says that it cannot do cash discrimination. Yeah. And I, I let them know, I went last night somewhere, and if they don't have cash, then it's free. Okay. They can't discriminate, uh, even Foxborough Stadium, and it's uh, Section 10A, right. you can look it up in Mass General Law, they cannot discriminate against cash. And as one last thing, every point of sale that takes credit, must take cash. If, if you don't do that, you might as well put whites only or something like that as a discrimination example because that's one of the key things is we, as a people, cash yeah. allows us to flow around. I understand. That's a, a philosophy. I've read about that as well. Yeah. Uh, John, uh, your, can, your other candidates appear to be going after each other. Do you want to get on on this? Yeah, I say you, you don't want to no, disparage this, anybody, but you're welcome this to. This is the perfect example of people in the leadership not respecting the roles of other uh, players in government. The city council has 100% legal jurisdiction to determine the class, uh, classification for taxes. It's not the mayor's job. The mayor shouldn't be dictating what city councilors should do. And I understand that 
Each and every individual involved in city government, whether it's the planning board, zoning board, conservation, they each play an intricate role, mm -hmm. but by law they have a definition of what their responsibility is and isn't. I know what the responsibility of the mayor is. I spent years in my youth being mentored by former mayors Kay Shang, Judy Robbins. Mm -hmm. You know, I understand that the mayor is just the head of the organization. It's not a one-man organization. It's a team. It's Team Atterborough. I want to be the head of the team, but I'm not a dictator. Okay. Well, are you saying they haven't stayed in their lanes? What, what, are, you, what are you saying? Well, I think to, to talk about or what class, tax classification should be is 100% the role of the city council. Okay. As mayor, I'm not going to uh, put my personal influence on the city council. There, there are times when a mayor presents something to the council yeah. and then the council has to um, discuss it and determine whether they're for it or against. But I, I'm not going to impose my will on the 11 people who are elected by the same people who are going to elect us. Okay, I've got to let Kathleen respond. Take about 20 seconds yeah. and then Jay, you'll get a quick one and then we'll go to break. I, I think the point was pretty clear. I was referring to Jay's action while on, actively on the city council and in my experience in the past few years. And also, as he knows, we've had this conversation repeatedly. A lot of the business owners or businesses downtown do not own the space that they're in. So shifting the taxes does not immediately benefit them in any way. It may benefit the people who own the building, and it also more greatly benefits some of the multi-million and billion dollar uh, businesses that we have in the city of the utility. So my question is, if you're going to talk about helping residents, why do you continually advocate to increase their tax burden? Jay, you get the last word before we go to break, yeah, 30 I, seconds. I, again, here we go. We're just, this is just talking downtown. We have businesses throughout the city which have felt the crunch coming out of the pandemic. They need a little bit of help. <clears throat> We're running out of shift, so if we swing too drastically, that's a bad thing. I've always been about incremental, mm -hmm. um, in, incremental whether bringing it up or bringing it down. These big shifts, which I believe my opponent has um, suggested a couple of them throughout her time on council, is dangerous. Okay, let's hold it there. Quick break. We'll be right back with the final segment. Welcome back to our Attleboro mayoral debate. Let's get right to a lightning round, and then we have uh, one minute each for the closing statements coming up. Uh, John Davis, am I understanding you don't want to be paid to be the mayor? You'll forego your salary? Absolutely. <clears throat> Uh, as, as I've been saying for 30 years, I mean, I, I've run for mayor multiple times in the past. I've been an elected official in many capacities. I never wanted money from city government. Okay. Uh, I just take it as a yes, you'll forgo your sa yes. salary. How about you, Kathleen? You want to be paid to be the mayor? Yes. Yes. I think the, I think the job deserves it, and I, I have a family of four. I can't operate otherwise. J uh, Jay? Yes, I share Kathleen's sentiments, but I do appreciate John, and anyone who knows John knows that that was a genuine sentiment. How about you, Timothy? You want to be paid? 100%, although I did offer 10% of my salary to be used uh, for consulting to get the, the city hall working rate, and then I get that at the back end when we show all our stats go up. Okay, the outgoing mayor said the mayor should also be the chair of the school board. you agree with that, Timothy? I could agree with that. You do? Yes. How about you, John? No. No? Why? No, um, my friend Mayor Shang was the mayor when that was changed. Uh, after years of talking with Kay, and the, as he saw it, a conflict between um, what, he, what, what they were presenting to him and him playing a role on both sides. Upon thinking about that clearly, yeah, again, separation of powers. I think we, uh, people elect the school board to make tough decisions, and um, it should be clear that there's no crossing over. We're in two different hats. Okay, so you're Renault. Timothy, I want to be fair to you. You, you yeah. said yes. Yeah. Uh, just to amplify, if you'd like, why the mayor should be the chair of the school board. Well, like I said, I've studied for years both in religion and philosophy and in practice with major corporations like Amgen and Boston University that I feel my policies will work for both the mayorship and the city council. Okay. The, yeah. Kathleen, yes or no? Uh, uh, um, it doesn't matter what I think, Jay. The, 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 it's an interesting question, and, and indeed the majority of municipalities in Massachusetts, the mayor is a member and or the, the chair. I think it's an interesting topic. I can argue both sides of it. But at the end of the day, it's up to the voters to decide. So yeah. this would be one of many items I would explore with the Charter Review Commission. I have concerns about other issues besides this. The treasurer right. and the tre uh, collector need same, to be appointed. Same them for your closing, which yes, is coming up it. in just a second. Yes or no, do you want to be the chair of the school board? 20 seconds. Absolutely not. However, I think it's important that the mayor continues to build the relationship with the administration of the schools and the school committee, which I've already done over my years' involvement. OK, this leads us nicely to our closing statements. Kathleen, I know you you wanted to talk about a few more issues. You have one minute sure. to address the camera. Go ahead. It's Thanks, yours. Gene. Uh, yes. So I want to be mayor because, as I mentioned before, this is all about timing and opportunity. 
Attleboro is in a really good place right now. We have a record high stabilization fund. The city is moving forward. The plans that were laid years ago are starting to come into fruition and this feels very much like a tipping point. point. The moment is now for someone who's creative, collaborative and innovative and bold leadership. I have the relationships, the experience and ultimately the perspective to make the decisions that will continue to move the city forward. I'm particularly mindful of kids in these really challenging times with mental illness and mental health issues. I'm particularly mindful and have been talking about housing long before the election, uh, the, rather the campaign, talking about mental illness long before the campaign. As I mentioned before, I think fundamentally, Gene, I'm a person of action. I'm doing it. I want to continue to do it and lead from the corner office. All right, very nice. Tim Barone, your next closing statement, one minute. Well, thank you, Gene. I just believe I, I have a real opportunity here since I've born and bred here for 40 year plus years, I've gone away, I've traveled the world, and I want to be back in Attleboro to give my talents and get the talents of everyone. We talked about how little we've had of uh, voter turnout, especially for Attleboro for just about any race, and this might be only about 8% turnout. We should have, you know, 90% turnout. People should feel involved, they should feel like their voice is being heard, and uh, that their <coughs> vote is being tracked, that they know that their vote is going where it's going. And that's why I advocate, as a side note, paper ballots and videoing of all uh, ballots. That, that's the way it should be. Any black box, you don't know what it is. Um, as, a, as the last point, why I was running is because I believe uh, there's a guy named T. Harvey Eckerd who says, how you do anything is how you do everything. If, and I don't mean to harp on it, but it, it's a good point, 67% increase in parking, that can happen to your property taxes, that can happen to any of, of your taxes. And uh, as a last point, I hope you can vote for Timothy Barone for, uh, February 28th. Uh, I always say, Barone, don't forget about it. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> All right. John Davis, one minute closer. Well, Gene, I'm running for mayor for the same reason I got involved in local government over 30 years ago. It's because I know that we can do a better job of providing basic fundamental services to the taxpayers. You know, I've spent my whole life involved in public policy and in public service. You know, one of the things that I offer is that there's nothing left in life that I want that I can acquire through money. I'm interested in making the community where I grew up and have lived my whole 58 years a better place for us all to live. I've acquired a lot of skills and experiences over those 58 years. I've run three small successful businesses. I've been a planning board member. I headed our charter commission. I was uh, on the uh, regional planning authority. I've done just about everything in government you can do except be the mayor of Attleboro. If there's anything left in life for me to accomplish, it's as mayor helping to move our city forward over the next few years. Thank, Thank you, you, John. Kath, uh, Jay Delisio, the last one. Thank you. So I'm asking voters to vote for me, Jay Delisio, on February 28th to be the next mayor of the city of Attleboro. What's important to me is taking care of those who are most vulnerable. That's our seniors and that's our homeless population. Recently, we've seen several um, dozen of our homeless populations be put up in hotels. We need to help with that. We need to do better than that for our residents. We need to continue to protect the taxpayer in everything that we do. We have pots of money that's available that we can be creative with how to use this to take the responsibility off the taxpayer, off the ratepayer, to be able to help them afford the, the increase in gas, inflation, energy rates. Everything's on the rise right now. We have to do our part. I would challenge that the city's in a great financial shape. We're in good financial shape, and the decisions that we're going to be making over the next several weeks, months, and years are going to be critical for the next 5, 10, 15 years. We have gone through $9 million of free cash this year. Our stabilization's higher than it's ever been, but we need to do better, and we need to take care of our schools. Thank you, Jay Delisa. Thank all the candidates for coming in. Uh, we, these are the candidates of Mayor of Attleboro. Timothy Barone, John Davis. Kathleen D. Simone and Jay Delisio, who was on the council, you're also the acting mayor now.